Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software tour of the AT&T Samsung Propel Pro. It should have been called the Blackjack Slider for obvious reasons, uh, but instead they went with the name Propel Pro, and we're going to take a look at the software now. So let's get a little bit closer to the screen. So here we have the standard Windows Mobile sliding panel, panel interface, which a lot of people like, and I like it a lot too. Um, it really helps to put all the mainly used device functions right at the main screen so you don't have to drill into programs. So of course we have the time, we can flip through email or missed calls or voicemail or text messages. We can see our next calendar appointment or make a new one. And we can change the profile, uh, do other things like turn on Wi-Fi and uh, change the ringtone and things like that from the screen. Now there are many different home screens that come on this device. I'm actually going to go through all of them now. And the way you get to them is by going into the start menu. And we're going to go to settings over here. And we are at display, home screen. And here are the choices for the home screens. There are many of them. So we have sliding panel, which is the one we just saw. Sliding panel media, which will allow you to play music right from your main screen. Let's take a look at some of these Samsung um, home screens. See what they look like. Okay, so we've seen this one before on other Samsung devices. And by the way, this is a, a email pop-up notification. I find it to be the most annoying thing on the planet. Um, I'll show you how to turn that off. And actually, you can change the visual style of the email thing. Basically, it will pop up any time that you go back to your home screen. And the way you get rid of it is by pressing on the, the, the home button there. So here we have uh, Samsung's, one of their home screens. And... The way it works is that you can flip through, you can see missed calls, uh, new messages, how many emails you have. It's kind of like the sliding panel interface, just kind of condensed right onto this screen. So let's go and check out the second home screen. All right, and this home screen is called the Samsung pop-up home screen. And again, that silly email notification keeps coming up. And the way that this one works is that you basically move along, you can open various programs, or you can quickly go to messaging or email or missed calls. You can go to your next appointment. Again, it's a very similar concept to the sliding panel interface and the one we saw previous to this, just kind of arranged differently. And you can hide everything if you just want to have the date and the time. Let's check out that other one. Okay, this one's called Wiz Pro, and I think it's one of the more usable uh, home screens that is included on this device. So what we can do is we can, you know, check our email, check our messages. We can quickly launch a program that we've uh, opened recently, or we can go to the bottom here, and we can go to uh, contacts, and we can have people assigned there, people that you call on a regular basis. We can go to over to the right, where. Um, we can see our calendar appointments and we can kind of move around on the screen. This is actually quite cool. Uh, to the right of that is a photo viewer and we can actually flip through pictures. This is really cool. So if you take a lot of pictures on your device, this is a good way to flip through them. If we go to the right, we have music and I don't have any music on this device. And if we go back to home, we are taken back to the, uh, the main screen. So this is probably actually the best, I think, that uh, Samsung has come up with for non-touch screen Windows Mobile device home screens. This is a keeper. Okay, let's move on. Let's go into the start menu and see what we have there. So we have standard stuff like messaging. We have all the typical AT&T stuff here, such as uh, MediaNet, AT&T Mall. We have OZ Messenger, so you can log into multiple IM accounts at one time, which is terrific. GPS, although you can use Google Maps Mobile if you'd like, or Windows Live. Um, My Stuff allows you to uh, see certain uh, see the files on your device. Going into Organizer, we have usual stuff. We have a tip calculator. What phone doesn't have a tip calculator? Uh, we actually have something pretty cool here called Dio OCR, which will allow your, your device to take a picture of text and convert it to uh, editable text. So if you have a business card you're taking a picture of or you see a news article, it works pretty well, and we'll talk more about this in the review. We have other things like stopwatch, world clock, so that you can keep track of uh, what time it is in multiple places, and of course, calculator and smart converter. Going down the list, we have applications. And in here, we have Adobe Flash Lite. We have some Java-based trialware. You're going to hear me say that a lot through the rest of this uh, review. We have this, this full suite of Office Mobile programs, which is good. Wiki Mobile, which is a Java program, doesn't work terribly well on this device. Uh, if we go back, we have games, and surprise, surprise, we have a lot of Java-based trialware. All of these games, except Solitaire and Bubble Breaker, you must pay for. 
and uh, AT&T really likes to include Java-based trialware, you would think that when you buy a smartphone, they would give you the full version of a game for free. But no, they're trying to nickel and dime you. Never a fan of that. Uh, we have Microsoft Voice Command, which is good. So you can talk to your phone and say, call Bob, and you don't have to train it. And I put Skyfire on here because Internet Explorer is not a good mobile browser. So check out Skyfire or Opera Mini um, to get a better browsing experience on your device. Okay, so let's take a look at the settings. There are some settings associated with the slider and some other things. Let's go into there. Okay, so if we go into message ticker, this is that, uh, that's that annoying email pop-up that keeps, keeps coming up, and you can change the style of the um, notification. The idea here is that it's an in-your-face notification when you have an email, but your phone will ring or make a sound or vibrate when you have an email anyway, so there's really no purpose in, in using this as far as I can tell. Here is slide settings, which will tell the device if it should lock when you close the slider, which is a good idea. And also for an incoming call, should you slide up to answer the call or should you also press the, end, the send key? I think it's quite convenient to have it set up so that you just slide it open and you answer the call immediately. This phone is Video Share, which is AT&T's one-way uh, video teleconferencing uh, pr a program. Not many people are using it, but this phone is Video Share capable if you want that to work. Now, if we go into key settings, we can actually program the keyboard to launch certain programs. Um, so if we go to Show List, we can assign what happens when you press Function C or Function see what the other ones are, function H, and so on. So that's pretty cool. Uh, one of the problems with this is that you have to open up the keyboard first to get, or you have to slide open the device first to get to the keyboard to type function, so you may be better, be better off just having, uh, just going through the start menu to opening that program that you're looking for. So overall, I think the software on the Samsung Propel Pro is actually a step up from what we're used to seeing on AT&T smartphone devices. Yes, there's still a lot of Java-based trialware, but I'm really liking this new home screen that allows you to kind of flip through. It reminds me of TouchFlow 3D actually a little bit and how it, it arranges things by these, these panels and you can have favorite people or you can look through your photos in almost a 3D kind of way. I think that one of the best parts of using this device is the taller screen. As we mentioned in the um, as we mentioned in the hardware tour, the screen is 80 pixels taller than a device like the Blackjack, and you can see that visually here. Or if we go into certain screens, um, such as the settings screen, you can really get a feel for how how that differs. You can just see so much more on the Propel Pro than you can on the Blackjack, thanks to this taller screen. So it really is helpful there. Coming up soon is the full review of the Propel Pro, where we're going to talk about battery life, performance, and everything else that we didn't cover in these last few videos. That's it for now.